But the French Open almost upon us. The seeds have been set for the French Open after the Roman Masters. That's how it works. A week before the French Open, those rankings are what the rankings are going to be going into the French Open next week. We had massive results for two massive players in that top four. Let's go have a look at what happened last week in Rome. So on the women's side, we had one versus two, Sviantec versus Sabalenka. And it was Fiontek again, beating Sabalenka in the final. This time, 6-2, 6-3, which was better than Madrid that they played two weeks ago. She extends her lead over Sabalenka in the rankings. And on the men's side, Zverev, he took out Jarry in the final, 6-4, 7-5, which was super important for his ranking going into the French Open, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Also, Jarry getting a boost in the rankings as well after making that final. So great to see both of those guys doing well just before the French. All right, let's go to the players that are outside the top 10 that did well this week. Starting with Colin. She went up in the rankings, three spots, number 12 in the world. Had she have won Rome, she would have been in the top 10. But number 12, still a massive boost if you saw where she was six months ago in the rankings. Jerry, after making the final of Rome, he goes up eight spots, number 16 in the world, which is a career high for him. And Tabillo, he also goes up seven spots, number 25 in the world after making the semifinals, which is also a career high for him. So the Chileans getting to a career high after making the semifinals in the final of a big 1,000 event. Players that went down the rankings, Runa. He only went down one spot, but he did make the final here last year and unfortunately did drop a lot of points. So he is getting further and further away from that top 10. He's almost 1,000 points behind the number 10 spot now. So being at 13 in the world, he is really in no man's land when it comes to the rankings at the moment. Kalanina, last year's finalist. She goes down to 56 in the world, 25 spots lower than last week. And Chorich did really well last year at this event, making a deep run. He lost all his points, went down 16 spots, number 71 in the world after Rome. So players there that did so well last year, but just couldn't come close to replicating any of their results, losing a lot of points, losing a lot of spots. All right, I'll start on the WTA now because we didn't have many changes, but we have got the seeds locked in for the French. So Sviantec extends her lead over Sabalenka at number one after winning in Rome. Sabalenka also extends her lead a little bit over Goff after making the final at number two. Goff stays at three with Rebecca at four, losing all the points from last year's title. So she kind of falls behind. Now 2,000 points behind Goff in the rankings at number four. But Gula stays at five with Von Drusser at six. But we had a change down the bottom half with Zachary going up one spot, overtaking Zhang, who went down one spot. Even though Zhang did better in Rome, it's really weird how that happens, but that's just the way the rankings work. Jabur comes in at number nine, and Ostapenko stays at number 10 for now. And that'll be the top 10 seeds going into the French Open this time next week. Having a look at the race of the finals, and Sviantec is almost qualified. And we're not even into the second slam of the year, so she's extending her lead again against Sabalenka and Rabakina below her, but she is so close to qualification. And if she wins the French, she's all but qualified for the end of year finals. We do have a change at the top though with Rabakina going down number three and Sabalenka overtaking her to go to number two after Sabalenka won her way to the final and obviously Rabakina didn't play. So a lot of points went missing for her. Colin stays at number four with Goff at number five. Zhang goes to number six. There was a little bit of change on the bottom with Ostapenko going up two spots into that number seven spot, making the quarterfinals of Rome last week, pushing Paolini down to number eight. Kostrug went down to number nine. Kazakina fell out of the top 10 completely, making way for Zachary, who jumps back into that top 10 contention. So some big changes there after a big 1000 event, as we always see when it comes to the race of the finals. On the men's side of things, not too many crazy changes. Nothing at the top as well with Djokovic staying at number one and Sinner at number two. Now those guys will be battling for that number one spot at the French Open because of course Djokovic is the defending champion of the French and Sinner didn't do that well. So if Sinner does play the French Open, it's very likely that he could overtake Djokovic in the rankings and become world number one post French Open. So we'll talk about that a little bit during the tournament. Elgris stays at number three. We did have a change in the middle with Medvedev going down number five and Zverev going up to number four after he won Rome. And of course, Medvedev lost all his points from winning Rome last year. And that is huge. Because if everybody plays in the top 10, there was no injuries, no withdrawals, there's a possibility that Medvedev could play against Djokovic or Alcaraz in a quarterfinal of the French. Whereas being number four, Zverev avoids those guys until at least the semifinals. So massive change there. Rublev, he stays at number six with Rude at number seven. And another big change with Hercatch going up to number eight and pushing City Pass down to number nine. Now, not as much of a crucial change as the Medvedev change, but still, being in the top eight, you avoid the other guys in the top eight until the quarterfinals. Being number nine does put you in a bit of a dodgy position where you could draw against another tough player, possibly another top eight guy. Then at number 10, Dimitrov stays there for now, but yeah, some big changes, especially with the seeds being locked now for the French Open for crucial guys, especially the guys that have done well on the clay over the last couple of seasons. Looking at the race of the finals now, and Sinner, he stays at number one, despite not playing in Rome, he still stays at one, but Zverev, he overtakes 
Medvedev and Rude to go into the number two spot after adding a thousand points to his total. Medvedev gets pushed down to three and Rude goes down to number four. Rublev, he stays at number five. Another change in the middle with Pass overtaking Alcaraz. He got to number six, pushing Alcaraz to seven. Of course, Alcaraz didn't play Rome, so that's why he couldn't add any points to his total. Dimino stays at number eight, with Dimitrov at nine, and Fritz. He stays at number 10 for this week. So really interesting, again, that Djokovic is not on this list. It's, it's wild to think that Djokovic is not here, but of course, if Djokovic does win the French Open, he will rocket into this top eight like he never left. So... There's obviously one, two big weeks that are coming up over the next couple of weeks that could get Djokovic in there. But man, so weird not to see Djokovic in the race of finals. And we're almost in June. So there you have it. They are the seeds locked in for the top 10. And it's really interesting, especially on the men's side with those changes. Now, when the draw comes out and also whether or not Sinner and Alcaraz are healthy to play will determine whether or not those changes make any difference. Uh, because, of course, the draw might come out and it might have been worse for Zverev to be number four than it was to be number five. I don't know how that would work. But then again, if Sinner, for example, does pull out, Zverev will go up to number three and Medvedev will go up to number four. And being three or four doesn't really change much uh, until the draw comes out. And of course, depends on where they fall. But what do you think of the rankings this week? What do you think of Rome in general? I mean, it was so good on the WTA. Obviously, massive upsets on the men's side. We had massive withdrawals as well on the men's side. It felt like it wasn't as good. Uh, but the final, you know, the, the final was okay. You know, Jared getting there was good for him. Zverev putting his hand up as a, as a French Open favorite potentially as well. But there it is. Rome's done. French Open coming up next week.